Hello and welcome. In this little intro you see me making Bakelite. And whilst you're enjoying this, this shows all the necessary steps from heating the reactants to taking a look at the precursor, loading up the Bakelizer, setting up the reaction temperatures and pressure and finally taking a look at the results which aren't perfect but they are a very nice example of Bakelite as it's solid and most importantly there are no bubbles it's nice and shiny so let's go over the reaction really quickly we have phenyl and formaldehyde that react to form a Bakelite precursor molecule as you can see in this graph and on the right you see a more or less precise example of how the final Bakelite molecule looks after all these uh, precursors have fused together. The only thing I did was switching out the phenyl for resorcinol as it's a lot easier to store and more friendly to handle. Uh, by the way my phenyl was getting bad so this seems to be a good choice. Also it's easier to acquire. And now for the reaction mixture, I use 2 grams resorcinol, 5 milliliter of 37% formaldehyde and 5 to 7% sodium hydroxide solution. It is important that you get the concentration right, because the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution determines how fast the reaction will go. Here you see an example of uh, a reaction that is almost a uh, went almost to the finish because the concentration was about 30%. So the Bakelite is cured, but there is still a lot of water in it, which formed this kind of gel. It's a bit like an aerogel, and it's almost impossible to get this water out there to form some solid Bakelite. So what you want to do, as you can see here, is heat the Bakelite mixture, and if it goes red right immediately, you have used too much catalyst. So too high in the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Instead it should stay clear for quite a while and you should be able to boil a lot of water off. Like this example. Here there's almost no water left and it's not like a gel, it's not squishy and gooey, instead it's a solid orange paste which is about halfway cured and not a deep red which means it's fully cured. So the concentration here was about 7%. And getting as much out of, uh, water out as possible is important because this will reduce cracking in the bakelizer. And as you see my final example in the beginning still had one crack. This means I still had too much water in it, so maybe an even lower concentration of sodium hydroxide might be necessary. But if it is too low, your formaldehyde will vaporize before it took part in the reaction. So I guess around 5-7% to is about the optimum you can get. And as you see here, using this wide opened aluminum dish allows for more water to evaporate than the test tube, which also contrib contributed to this more water-free precursor. Also you can try drying it. Here you see the bakelizer setup. A pressure of 8 bar a temperature of around 150 C. And using this bakelizer is important because if you don't do it, it will bubble and crumble. And there are many videos on YouTube showing you how to make bubbly and crumble uh, bakelite, but using a bakelizer you can prevent this because the remaining water in the Bakelite precursor is not able to boil because of the high pressure. So it will stay a liquid and slowly make its way out of the plastic, which then of course shrinks. And here on the right, you see a Bakelite sample I Bakelized without pressure. So this was then outside the Bakelizer and it's pretty well known and pretty much useless. It has almost no structural integrity and it breaks right, right away. So it's very crumbly and you can't do much with it. You can't do uh, little crafts and you can't do uh, sort of shapes. So this shows you just the necessity of doing a bakelizer. The two examples on the left you see in the dark red were done with too much catalyst. 
Here you see an example that was done with a right amount of catalyst but in a test tube and as you see there is an enormous amount of water in there because if you just look at the amount of resource null that went in there it barely covers the bottom. So all this water if you put it uh, right away in the bakelizer as it is now will cause to shrink the product massively and this shrinking will induce cracks. So you want to get as much water out as possible so that it doesn't look like here. This is basically just a gel and you can't really make plastic out of it. So just for uh, an example, I bakelized the gel and it gave me just some black powder because it all cracked because there was way too much water in it. So you do not, don't only have to get the catalyst right, but also you have to make sure that the water percentage is also right in your precursor. And then you will get something like this. Some nice shiny black bakelite that is rigid, solid and doesn't crumble. I know it still has one crack in there which is a minor imperfection and quite honestly I'm a bit annoyed but you still see how much shrinking occurred because at the beginning it filled the test tube. So there is room for improvement to reduce the water content even more. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Goodbye.